On the 4th of April 2021, the Center for Infectious Disease Research in Zambia, or more commonly called CIDAS, celebrated its 20th year. This remarkable achievement is a celebration not only for the organization, but for the entire country. CIDAS is a non-profit organization. Essentially what CIDAS does is provide a platform that allows researchers, um, Zambian researchers, who can collaborate with others, whether in-country or internationally, to do groundbreaking work on research questions that are relevant for the Zambian community. CIDAS is one of our key partners that have helped the government and the Minister of Health in particular with evidence that has had a profound impact in public health policy formulation. CIDAS has also supported government uh, in the development of guidelines for a variety of program areas, including HIV, TB, um, cervical cancer, voluntary medical um, male circumcision, uh, prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, reproductive maternal neonatal, COVID-19, just to mention a few. CIDAS is really committed to a healthy Zambia. And, uh, and the way we do that is by feeding information back from the teams and the facilities. So community teams, what are the issues the communities are dealing with? Uh, um, patients, what are the issues they're dealing with? HIV infected, those not HIV infected, um, specifically looking at key populations, how can we um, support key populations, and by key populations I mean groups that may not normally have access to care, maybe marginalised populations, so working with those ones to try and um, help them provide access to services as well, um, I think that's key. And um, CIDAS is able to, to quickly respond to many things and, and, and be able to really um, ask some questions and do some things that the ministry uh, may have to, may, may take longer to do or may not be able to do because they don't have the resources. CIDAS provides quality healthcare and um, expertise that improves other healthcare workers to be able to deliver quality healthcare. And for me, um, you know, that is what drives me to be able to teach others a better way of providing health services for the benefit of the patients, the benefit of the Zambian people, I would say. And so that drew to me because the manner in which they ran their projects, being able to go out and provide a service to people that um, couldn't access uh, health services, um, or certain health services, not all, but certain health services. I would say that's what drew me to CIDAS. 20 years ago, Zambia was a very different place. HIV was ravaging not only our communities, but the country as a whole. Every family was either affected or had someone infected by the HIV pandemic. An urgent call to action was needed to address the situation. At that time, almost 20% of the population were HIV positive. So this was everybody um, from, you know, the president's son uh, down to, um, you know, the sort of uh, basic laborer or farmer or, you know, health worker, ourselves, my own family, everybody was impacted by this awful disease. And so for me, it was a real um, opportunity to do a small part for my country to go back home to Zambia and to do some really important work. How are we going to deal with things like stigma, which was extremely intense at the time. I think there was a lot of fear as well, which was driving stigma. Um, there was a lot of need. People were literally dying. Um, the HIV rates at that time were ranging around 20%, meaning almost one in every five individuals um, had HIV. You could tell that HIV was impacting Zambia uh, very visibly. It was everywhere. Driving through the roads, you would see uh, chairs and tents that were for rent. You saw uh, caskets advertised um, or set up just on the road because the impact of HIV was so severe. UNH estimate that about 94,000 Zambians were getting infected with HIV every year, and over 70,000 were dying from HIV every year. So it was really, really bad. 
and mothers who are infected with HIV, 30% of them will give birth to kids who are infected with HIV. And then those kids, 80% of them will die before they made it to their fifth birthday. So it was not, it was not a great situation at all. In the late 1990s, Dr. Moses Sinkala, the then District Director of Health for Lusaka District, reached out to Dr. Stan Vermund, a professor and director at the John J. Sparkman Center for Global Health at the University of Alabama. They, together with Dr. Robert Goldenberg and Dr. Jeff Stringer, both obstetric gynecologists from the University of Alabama, founded CIDAS. In 1998, there was a consultation between a group of uh, individuals from University of Alabama at Birmingham and uh, leaders in the fight against HIV AIDS in Zambia. We had a uh, two-day conference, which was very much an effort to say what kind of research was needed to uh, help Zambia progress in the fight against AIDS. CIDAS was signed up to Memorandum of Understanding with the Ministry of Health uh, through the University of Alabama to assist with activities that ordinarily would be carried out solely or exclusively by the, um, by the government. And so CIDAS became an appendage, if you like, for the government through the Ministry of Health to assist working in government health facilities across the country. And as you can imagine, it was a series of very pragmatic research questions. How to deploy drugs more effectively for therapy, how to enable prevention, how to accelerate vaccine development. And um, uh, by 1999, we had an agenda that we were writing grants to international agencies. And by 2000, we were funded to do um, work to prevent mother-to-child transmission. The PMTCT program started uh, as a study in uh, 2000, where we were only giving single dose of therapy to the mother at the onset of labor and the baby would receive a single dose at uh, delivery. And I think that CIDRS has been at the forefront of having Zambians develop solutions to Zambian problems that can be implemented in the Zambian setting. We were the first people to describe that. At the time, there were conversations around, oh, Africans, you know, can't take ART. It's too difficult for them. So you can imagine in that scenario to come and put ART in a primary care setting, it was unheard of. So we published the first papers and everybody was blown away. And not only that, it gave other African countries the confidence to say, we can do it. And also with children, um, I'm a pediatrician by training. It was um, having great outcomes in pediatrics was not really very well documented. And at the time, that was sort of the height of the HIV AIDS pandemic. Things were really, really terrible. Um, and so the job was to really um, get the uh, PEPFAR funding um, and change that from kind of a, a concept to reality and focus on implementation on the ground. And that was the beginning of the rollout of the antiretroviral therapies and getting this life-saving medicine um, out into the country. Slowly but surely, we were able to offer um, prevention of mother child transmission through nevirapine, one of the antiretroviral drugs, to all of the 26 clinics in Lusaka at that time through the Lusaka Urban District, which was directed by uh, Dr. Sinkala and the 10 birthing centers and the UTH center all were able to offer uh, this. But the very first nevirapine that was brought in was uh, brought in by us, by CIDRS, uh, to try to stem the tide of, of pediatric HIV, uh, which was so devastating at that time. You can see that the number of new infections amongst babies born to HIV positive women has reduced and that has been a big impact. Over the years, um, 
a number of uh, individuals on HIV treatment has increased, so more and more people um, uh, are access accessing treatment. And then uh, the number of babies uh, born to HIV positive numbers that are getting infected with HIV has also reduced. I think Cider's contribution has really been significant. Some of the numbers which are impressive, the number of people dying from HIV over the last 20 years has been reduced by 70%. The number of new cases of HIV has been reduced by over 50%. And the number of new cases of TB and HIV have also been reduced by over 50%. So, you know, the last 20 years has really seen a sea change uh, in the healthcare system, how the healthcare system uh, cares for chronic disease and with really dramatic results. Clearly, there's still a long way to go, but I think CIDR's contribution in the last 20 years has been significant. Today, CIDR's is the largest independent Zambian public health organization. Over a thousand Zambians work with CIDR's every day to collaborate and strengthen the government of the Republic of Zambia. CIDAS is just not about infectious diseases and honing on to HIV. It does much more than just HIV. Uh, for instance, if we talk about um, cervical cancer, which is one of the non-communicable diseases, and uh, you may be aware that cervical cancer is the number one cancer found in women in our country, uh, we've done a lot of um, uh, work around how to screen for cervical cancer in women, not just HIV positive women, but women in general, and how to treat those early lesions. Because you want to be able to screen and catch the disease early on, prior to it becoming florid or advancing, and then having these women travel hundreds of kilometers to Lusaka, to the Cancer Diseases Hospital. So we've done a lot of work with the ministry in terms of cervical cancer screening and treatment of early lesions. And then also around cervical cancer, we've done work on uh, the, um, the vaccine that prevents the human papilloma virus, HPV vaccine. That um, virus is actually uh, implicated in the genesis of cervical cancer. So the rollout or uptake of HPV vaccine amongst young girls. So working with communities, traditional leaders, to get them to understand what this vaccine is all about and why it's important to get their young girls vaccinated. And this is vaccination for girls between the ages of nine and into the early teenage years. So it's not a, a group that, or a population that typically take in for vaccinations. So a lot of awareness and education had to be done to get communities sensitized and actually accept um, those vaccines. CIDRS has been really at the forefront of improving TB services, especially for people living with HIV. So one major project that we did uh, with an implementation science approach was taking evidence that we knew from the region showed that starting people on antiretroviral therapy for the HIV early after a TB diagnosis can extend their lives. But the challenge was how do we bring that into a health facility so it can happen in the real world? So we had worked with our partners from CDC to develop a one-stop shop for tuberculosis and HIV care and tuberculosis clinics. And we were able to show that by bringing those services for HIV, including treatment initiation and follow-up into the TB clinic, that we could improve the uptake of antiretroviral therapy for people living with HIV who had TB, and also improve um, the proportion that sort of uh, continued on treatment over the short term. And since 2010, we have continued to, 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 to work in prisons, and really the work is focused at strengthening the systems uh, to ensure that um, there is ongoing TB screening, uh, but combined with HIV screening among uh, people um, who are incarcerated in these uh, correctional facilities. CIDRS led a study um, between 2016 and 2019 in providing universal test and treat for HIV within um, correctional facilities in Zambia in collaboration with partners in South Africa and South African prisons. And so what we were able to do is show that we could take an intervention from the community, like testing people at scale and starting them 
immediately or rapidly on treatment and transfer that best practice that we know works from large clinical trials and bring it into a challenging setting like Chimbukaila, um, Lusaka Correctional Facility here in Zambia. And we were able to offer that intervention to incarcerated people and then follow them with time. And what we were able to see is that we could reach more than 90% of the incarcerated people that we enrolled with HIV testing, and that for those that remained incarcerated, we were able to retain them in care at above 90% and achieve viral suppression at above 90%, which really matched what community programs were doing. So in a way, we were able to show that what was possible in probably more feasible settings like a community clinic was also transferable and doable in a really difficult setting like a prison. With the coming in of institutions like CIDAS, I think we saw a, a formidable approach in the manner in which um, uh, tuberculosis um, situations were handled. Uh, screening was done at entry. There were follow-up screenings that were done. Uh, those that were found um, to, to, to have uh, the bus lie were, were commenced on treatment and they were isolated. And so there was that coordination uh, towards the, um, responding to um, the increase uh, in TB cases that were recorded. They are not defaulting. Next appointment, then the deaths When I go in the community, I find someone who is TB patient. I help them it's, if the patient is a bedridden patient. I can get medicine from the health facility to their homes and help them how they can get their treatment, how can they drink their medicine. Beside the service of Nana Buira, Nambur Wankala, Muzambo Konka, Mu community, Madifort, Purivena Guaza and Bamankala, and Kara and Kariri. Sadas is a key partner for improving the health of Zambians, taking the issues that we find on the ground, finding solutions ideally and then implementing those and working with the partners and with the ministry to scale up those. And then not just scale them up and run away, but stay behind it and make sure the quality is maintained, that fidelity is maintained, that integrity is maintained. The general population who are HIV infected or living with HIV have access to treatment, they have access to awesome treatment, really good high quality treatments. And mostly the Ministry of Health can manage to provide that, to, to manage them, to manage first, second and third line treatment. The, you know, the systems are in place, but really now working with ministry to target those that are res, what we call resistance, resistant groups, or groups that are not coming forward, to try and help them. Because if we want to reach our 95, 95, 95 targets, we need to get everybody, and we need to get everybody who's HIV positive onto treatment, and get once they're on treatment, get them suppressed. So that's the only way we're gonna win. The partnership with CIDAS has improved the quality of healthcare in Zambia. The ultimate impact is the reduction in deaths and hospital admission because of the research that CIDAS has done in the area of HIV. For example, um, the scaling up of differentiated service delivery models where the provision of HIV prevention and transmission and, and treatment services are moved from the health centers and hospitals to the community, and then people can access such services in their neighborhood. That has indeed has, had tremendous, uh, has tremendously contributed to reducing the long queues that used to be the norm in some of our government health facilities in the past. This was done uh, through CIDA's contribution to building the capacity of healthcare workers, um, community health workers, and other community-based um, volunteers through various training and mentorship programs. The work of CIDA's continues to be vitally important. We've had success in the rollout of ARVs, but that was many years ago. Now, it's a question of getting the treatments to as many people as possible and segueing, transitioning 
to prevention? Uh, currently, CIDES is involved in a number of implementation science research activities. Um, one, um, for instance, is focusing on understanding why key populations living with HIV are dropping out of treatment. Um, as, as you may be aware, we can only effectively address the HIV epidemic if those people living with HIV are retained in care. And one sp uh, sp um, specific uh, group that is of interest uh, to CIDAS is ensuring that key populations that are living with HIV are actually retained in care. So um, as part of implementation science, we've been looking at trying to understand the reasons why pe uh, key populations living with HIV and initiated on treatment are actually dropping out of uh, treatment. We've also been uh, focusing on understanding why uh, key populations um, who are not living with HIV but at higher risk um, and have been initiated on pre-exposure prophylaxis uh, are not continuing with the treatment. And the reason is that we want to ensure that those key populations that are HIV negative remain negative. And those key populations that are living with HIV are retained in care and subsequently attain viral suppression which is key towards uh, controlling the HIV uh, epidemic in the country. CIDAS is a key partner in conducting local research as well as participating in global network research trials. Kalingalinga Clinical Research Site was under um, Adult Clinical Trial Group uh, Network and we were looking at the co-infection of TB and HIV. I did a few studies that were actually looking at how they could treat uh, TB and the, the participants that were co-infected with TB and HIV. The research work and the studies that we do generate important uh, evidence that uh, we then use to contribute to, to policy and or to contribute to designing how to tackle um, TB and HIV. Um, in terms of the vaccines that we have worked with as a unit, um, we've worked primarily with um, uh, diarrheal vaccines, which is rotavirus. We've also worked on another diarrheal vaccine, which is um, enterotoxigenic E. coli. We've also, as part of belonging to the unit and the CIDAS, Having had a strong background in HIV, we've done HIV vaccine trials. We've also done some TB uh, vaccine trials. And now the buzzword is COVID. We are also involved in uh, uh, evaluating COVID vaccines. So we have a study currently running to see how safe and effective COVID vaccines would be in a population that is HIV positive. We've grown over the last uh, two decades to uh, such a big operation um, within the country. But we've also um, actually led in this area in the country and build foundation for other uh, laboratories, also including government laboratories through our collaboration with the government to make sure that there's improved facilities within the country. and. It's, we've, we've done great. We've worked with the government to make sure that what we have built in terms of research as a laboratory facility is translated also into patient care. And, and that is massive. Early on, CIDAS identified the need to build capacity of local Zambians to lead the technical, scientific and administrative solutions needed for our local context. And that's why we spend a lot of time in career development, professional development, get our scientists through uh, the postgraduate um, training, through master's program and through PhD training programs. When I joined CIDAS, eight, almost nine years ago, we had zero Zambians in any PhD program affiliated with CIDAS. We had PhD 
uh, fellows or candidates that were non-Zambians, that, that were non-Zambian and coming to CIDES and working with us through our research programs to further their own careers. Currently, we have about 20 PhD candidates and we've graduated three or four in the last couple of years. So we've tried to ensure that there's a, uh, there's a clear career pathway in terms of how you can become a researcher, an investigator, and grow as a scientist. And the reason for all this is because we recognize that for us to be successful and be relevant or remain relevant to the Zambian government as well as the Zambians, we have to have the right skill set of individuals to do, to do this work. All our funding is through competitive grants. So we go out onto the international space and compete with um, other organizations. Uh, mostly it's international uh, organizations which may be for-profit or non-profit and uh, compete for these grants. The opportunity that I got um, as a fellow was a really good one. I started off as an HIV Corps fellow. Um, they didn't bother about my experience, even though I did have the experience, they didn't bother about that. Um, I came in, learned about public health in the NGO sector first time. And I was actually given a chance, right? And I think there are many people who have that story who have been given a chance to get involved inside this through the fellowship programs. But it's not to say that that's the only way. Um, we've also had interns who've helped on certain projects, maybe just after university wanting to learn about procedures or learn you know, get a little bit of experience before they go out on the job market. And even though they might have not decided to stay here, they've eventually, you know, sort of said, hold on, there's actually a finance team there, there's a finance department, there's internal audit, there's different departments behind what we do as a research institution. And so we've attracted um, different Zambians, not just for the research side of HIV and everything else that we do, enteric diseases you mentioned, and all the cervical cancer and breast cancer work. And so we've attracted a diverse group of people. But the path that I took, the HIV Corpse Fellowship, is one that's attracted a lot of international people. And so being able now to extend that to a lot of Zambians, um, I can't remember the figure, but nine to 10 Zambian HIV Corpse Fellows um, being put through training where they have a mentor over a course of 10 to 12 months and that mentor talks you through your career path what can you do you get the opportunity to write you get the opportunity to be involved in analysis you get the opportunity to actually interview participants and take part in research um, as a whole we, we tend to think it's it's common, but it's not common. There are very few people who do this work, and there's a lot of people who are really excited about doing this work, who come from different countries, just to do it. So we're providing that for the Zambian people at home. Some of the other important things I would say I've learned from CIDES is learning how to um, keep our employees happy, and I think um, that centers around, um, you know, the culture of CIDES and that when employees are happy, then they're able to excel and do the important work that we're supposed to do. And so, um, you know, I have valued that support that I get from CIDES. It's a CIDES family at the end of the day. And I think um, we look out for each other and we have learned how to push each other to excel and become better and grow within our careers as well. It's been a great platform where you are able to meet various experts in the field. Uh, though CIDES is, is Zambian, it's, um, but it touches across like funders from across different parts uh, of the region. And you get to obviously interact with international collaborators from America, from the UK, and it's gave a platform to, to learn and as well as to grow in, in the career. So it's been a great platform where you are so constantly surrounded by experts in the field, not just within Zambia, but outside the country. The future for CIDAS is more exciting than ever. CIDAS continues to work on emerging and urgent communicable and non-communicable diseases that trouble our communities. CIDAS is also working to build long-lasting sustainable capacity and infrastructure to support public health in Zambia. CIDAS wants Zambia to be not only a regional, but a global leader in public health. So the next 20 years fill me with a lot of hope and excitement and inspiration. So the CIDAS campus is where we're going, where we're actually in the process of building our long-term home. 
This campus will, um, will, will have the CIDA's um, head office, uh, state-of-the-art uh, laboratory. We have a laboratory right now, but it's, we've outgrown that space. We've been in that space for over 16 years now. So we've, we've outgrown that space um, and we're looking to build a state-of-the-art laboratory to have the latest technology there and to maintain our interna international accreditation for our laboratories. Um, there is still very substantial program implementation that CIDRS is doing, and um, that's working with donors such as CDC and USAID and PEPFAR to uh, support government to um, provide large-scale interventions like HIV treatment in many, many sites. But it's also working on uh, researching better forms of uh, drugs, of vaccines, and um, and healthcare innovations that make care easier uh, to access for Zambian citizens. We are very proud that CIDAS is recognized by government as a key player and also recognize that CIDAS wouldn't have been able to achieve what it has done without a lot of support from partners and, and donors. One of the main reasons I supported CIDRS and continue to support is because they are a local, local um, uh, organization that have excellent capacity. When you look at the results that have been achieved by CIDRS and you compare that against other international organizations that have done work here, uh, CIDRS have definitely done as well as they did or even better a lot of times. Um, CIDRS has been there from the beginning, has continued to adapt and adjust the programming to stay up and on the science, to be a leader in the science, um, and continue to develop a program that is both robust and responsive to the state of the disease um, as it is. So for PEPFAR, having a partner like CIDRS that can adjust and respond um, as the science, as the disease continues to develop, for us is a, is a win. We need partners who are both local, but are able to, more importantly, are able to adjust and keep up with the science, and that's what CIDR is. The way in which CIDRS has grown as a strong local organization that listens to Zambians and prioritizes uh, health interventions that are most important to Zambians is a great model, actually, not just for Zambia, but probably the world. And I think we need many more organizations in other countries um, that reflect the same kinds of values that CIDRS brings to Zambia. No one knows better what Zambia needs than Zambians. So it is critical that local ownership, uh, local innovations, uh, local, local solutions, it is critical. We cannot just have uh, solutions coming from outside and then try to fit into what Zambia needs. That's for Zambia to determine. Uh, public health is all about understanding the challenges that individuals deal with and then coming up with solutions that take the context, the local context into account. Someone coming from outside, they will have difficulty understanding what are the challenges that average Zambians deal with. And if they come up with solutions that may have worked in one country, those solutions may not work in Zambia because the contexts are different. Uh, uh, working with Zambians and supporting Zambians to be in the lead, it's something that CDC is very proud of. It's something that CDC supports because it's just good policy. It's just good um, uh, public health because you want the most effective way to deliver services. And the only way that you can do that is to work with people that understand the context very well, who can implement programs in a way that others cannot do. And CITES has been that for us. And that's why we're very supportive of the work that they do. We're Zambian-led, we're here to stay. We have a, a majority Zambian board and a majority Zambian senior leadership. On behalf of CIDRS, we would like to thank all our valued partners for their ongoing support and collaboration. In particular, we would like to thank the Ministry of Health, the Ministry of Home Affairs, Ministry of Community Development and Social Welfare, Ministry of General Education, 
Ministry of Local Government and Housing and the Ministry of Chiefs and Traditional Affairs. So I see more groundbreaking research being done here. You know, CIDAS being cited um, by Africa CDC, by WHO and other policymakers in terms of the place to go to see firsthand um, some key innovative um, strategy or initiative. So um, it's really an exciting time ahead for CIDAS. Well, congratulations to the management and the board of CIDAS on the 20th anniversary and I uh, hope I'm able to be around to celebrate the next 20 years. It's been great reminiscing on where we came from um, and uh, thank you. I have to say thank you. Um, CIDAS launched my career. I just continue to marvel at the work um, that CIDAS uh, is doing. It makes me so proud to be part of the CIDAS family, um, to see the amount of work that an institution such as this has been able to contribute. Congratulations, I'm really proud of you, and I wish you all the best uh, for the next two more decades. And I can't wait to see what you're gonna do, and I can't wait to read about all the great work that you will continue to do. I see another you know, great 20 years ahead of CIDAS. It may be a very different CIDAS from what we are seeing now, but yeah, CIDAS will be in existence in 20 years. Congratulations on reaching 20 years and serving uh, the people living with HIV in Zambia. So congratulations on the past 20 years and all the best for the next 20 years. We look forward for the next 20 years that at also that point we will uh, be looking at different achievements that we would have um, built and different accolades that have come our way. So, um, yeah, I think it's been, it's been wonderful. It has really been an incredible journey. CIDAS is amazing. The fact that we've got here, the hurdles we've overcome and the work that we've achieved really is remarkable. Happy 20th birthday, CIDAS. Congratulations on 20 years of improving healthcare quality and access to healthcare for countless Zambians. And I wish you all the best for the next 20 years and beyond. Working with CIDAS to achieve what we've achieved over the last two decades. Thank you.